That's a shamanistic way to enter the world, man. I shamanistically brought you a couple seconds of peace there in your busy day. Oh, la, 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 la. So I'm glad you feel karmically in tune with the world right now, man. Peace be with you. Let's talk about Checkmate again. Now, I know a couple weeks, months ago, I brought this guitar out of the fucking back, man. I said, hey, this was a Checkmate guitar. I had no proof, man. It was just this piece of shit Korean guitar. I was trying to pass it off as Checkmate guitar. I was going to put it right here. So I usually put like a, an amplifier right here. What we're going to talk about, you know, try to, you know, bridge it back. Can't even find it anymore. I think I might have given it to somebody or thrown it away. I don't know what the fuck. Salvage it with some other guitar, man. I don't know what the fuck I did with it. But anyway, look it up in the old past, man. Look up Checkmate, you know, get kit, you know what I mean? Google that shit on the YouTube account, man. You'll find that shit, man. It's an old video of mine, man. Please be with you, old video. So anyway, I was at the flea market not too long ago, man. You know, I was with my daughter. It was real hot. It was a Thursday joint. There's this place called Columbus Market near me. And they have a Thursday morning thing, man. That's, that's the place to be a Thursday morning, man. If you're a flea market swap me kind of guy. I like some movement, man. So we in the movement in the back down there, man. Anyway, man. So we went there, down there. And I picked up this uh, real checkmate. I know it's checkmate because look. Look at this, man. Look at it. Look at it, man. It's a little checkmate crest, man. It's got a big seal upon its jacket. Go ahead now, man. So anyway, it's a real checkmate, man. And it's got some real checkmate problems. Like that other, I don't know, possible checkmate, man. It's got separation here at the bridge. You see that, man? That's not cool. And it also has separation at the heel, man. See that, man? See that, see that a little bit, man? There's all kinds of separation, man. This guitar is like fucking modern, fucking modern day Kramer versus Kramer, man. It's all over the place, man. There's all kinds of separation going on. It's only hurting the children, man. Only hurting the children, man. So we're going to do well, solid for the children, man. We're going to bring family back together, man. The Checkmate family. Be united today, man. We'll hum a little tune for you, man. We'll warm a little bit of sentiment. And we'll leave you on your way, man. Because that's what Bobby G does, man. It's the get your style, man. So I'm going to flip you around in a stylish manner, man. Flip, 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 flip. The script. Here we are, man. Number 98. 98. Time is getting late. So we got this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous acoustic instrument. This classical checkmate guitar in front of us, man. In the spirit of getting things getting things done, man, let's make it a twofer, man. This week we'll talk about that one. This next week we'll talk about this one. I just picked this one up at the flea market. This is a steel string guitar, man. You see that, man? This one is actually a model number G115. Got this for 15 bucks. So we'll talk about this one for 99, man. 99, feeling fine. But now we're at 98, man. 98 in the shade. Checkmate plate. Today's the date. Seal my fate. Just can't wait. Dictate the tape. Get no case. <laughs> All right, so I had enough, enough freestyling, man. Let's talk about this instrument. You know what I mean? Still got most of the strings, man. That's cool. So, what is this instrument, man? You know what's the, what's the model number? When I first got it, when I first came across it had no label in it i saw no label in it i was like but at least i know it's a checkmate because it's got the plate so i spent all afternoon on my phone you know what i mean looking at the checkmate acoustic guitars trying to get the model number for you people because i like to be thorough for the people you know what i mean finally i found one that kind of looked like it. it was a cl265 i was like wow cl265 that sounds good and uh, I noticed that all the classical guitars, I suppose, you know what I mean, in the later 60s were designated CL. Electrics were designated like E. You know what I'm saying? In the earlier 60s, everything was just a G. With the checkmate it was just a G, just G115. You know what I mean? It was kind of hard to pin this guitar down. What was the model number? You know what I'm saying? It had a weird head. You know, see that head, man? Most checkmates have a head that looks like this, man. The max tone that I had when I was a kid, man. You know, and that's the head that most of them have. And I couldn't really, I finally found one that looked like this. Was like, wow. CL265 is what the picture looked like on some kind of auction. So I was like, cool, man. Cool. But this was the only checkmate I ever saw, you know what I mean? It didn't have the plate and it didn't have the label either. You know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, man, that's not even how to label it, man. 
You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've never seen that. Most checkmates have a label. They have the plate on the you know, headstock. You know what I'm saying? Look at this cool little Gibson strap on in there. Aluminum. Old school, man. That piece itself is worth like 20 bucks, man. Yeah. These are very good wood, too. I mean, nice, nice. You know what I mean? Anyway, so let me get on with my story about you know what I mean, the stories, because I like to tell them, you know what I'm saying, so I was laying this guitar out right now to do this video right now, and I was like, you know what, I can't believe this thing never had a label on it, wouldn't it be funny if the glue dried up and the label just sort of fell in the bottom of the guitar, so I started shaking it around, I see all kinds of dust bunnies, and I shook it around, I shook it around, sure enough, man, there's a fucking label, it's not a guitar, all along, man, all along, man, this, this, this particular model, you see, is a G, 265 is that early one it wasn't a CL for classical you know what I'm saying it's a 265 it's for unclassical man it's just a working man you know what I mean before they were starting designating things you know what I mean it was just a, this little guitar my friend you know what I mean you play it with your finger and you'll get the guitar in your hand like ball like what ball go tweet 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 well ball oh bird I got you so what we're gonna do, man, is we're gonna fix this guy up this week, man. We're gonna another bridge job, man. I don't like these bridge guitar jobs, man. I hate it, man. Loosen these strings up, might have to take them off, man. For this job, this job is a little complicated. We'll pull this guy off, man. Take a look at, you know, I mean, how are things in Glockamora, man? How are things in Glockamora? Oh, the ring and run and run and run. Yeah, welcome back to the laboratory. I was in reform school for several days. Now I'm out. That's very ugly, man. You know what I'm saying, man? That's disgusting. Now, we gotta take these strings off. This just feels like Groundhog Day was an episode we did like, I don't know, two weeks ago, something like that. Look at these tuners, though, man. These tuners look to be like that same style tuners that are always on those tempos, man. You see that, man? I have a million tempos, man. Oh! 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 See that, man? Now, before we take these strings off, we might as well. You know, we need to get this guy back into shape, man. So we just reach into her, into her plier drill. Got all kinds of pliers. Here's a plier we could use on. My favorites, you know. These old dental... Dental hygienicals, man. You know what I'm saying? We use the blunt end one. This is what blunted. Get it all blunted up, man. This is very, very, very precision, man. If I break that off, man, I'm not even going to finish this episode. Oh, no. See you in a minute. Did you see that? Did you see that? Did you see what I'm saying, man? I mean, it's not perfect, but I mean, if you look at the shaft, it doesn't really wiggle around at all, man. That's a very, very skilled sort of, you know what I mean? You gotta know when to hold it, when to fold it, man. These are, you know what I mean? Once you break this thing, <gasps> you know what I'm saying? It's kind of expensive, an expensive turn, man. Turn of the hand. Let's get these strings off, man. Let's get these old strings off, man. Look at that, man. Take it off, man. Let's see when we're all denuded with strings. Peace be with you. All right, so the strings are off. Now, one thing I noticed when I was taking the strings off, this particular string right here, the D string, it's like a flat wound string from the 60s, a steel flat wound string. It is not a nylon string. This is probably why this thing is fucked up, man. And that also sucks because I don't have any nylon D strings, man. They're the ones that break the, the quickest. I have none in the pile, man. I'm certain of it almost, man. So, unfortunately, that brings us into, hey, man, I can pull a couple of strings out of the pile. To like, oh, I gotta open up a whole new pack of strings for this piece of shit guitar now. That fucking sucks. Anyway, man, look on the bright side, man. I was taking the strings off. I looked at the rosette, man. This is a real rosette. Can you believe that, man? This is a real rosette. Then I looked at the other checkmate guitar for next week. That was a real rosette, too, man. I feel it upraised and everything. It's not a sticker. It's a real rosette, man. It's great. Even though this is like a, as thick as like a piece of cardboard, really. Thinner, maybe. Not bad, man. Checkmate. Kresge brand, Kmart, man. That's where it came from, man. Kmart, man. 
So what we got to do is we got to reach in here. You know, let me take a look to see exactly what's going on there. It looks like there's two little bolts. So what we got to do is we got to pull these little things out, pry these guys out with a little, you know what I mean, exacto nif. Unscrew these things and see, you know what I mean, how much connection there is. It doesn't look like there's any connection here at all. Let's see when that's been attempted, man. Peace be with you now. All right, so we got the screws exposed. This can be a hard process, really, if you don't, you know, you know what you're doing, especially if they're real flush. So what I had to do is I I took a little drill bit and I drilled a little hole right next to them. You know what I'm saying? See my little drill bit? And then I took this little eyeglasses screwdriver and stuck it in that hole. And pop these guys right out. Came right out after that's done. So we got this guy exposed and we can go ahead and unscrew it now. Also, I took out that label, that precious label, so we can put that away for safekeeping, man. Put him away for safekeeping. Let's unscrew this. Let's see where we stand, man. I see we're all unscrewed. You screw up. You screw on. Peace be with you. All right, so we've hit a point of no return here. We got one bolt out and one bolt is not coming out. Now you can see here there's like a little kind of like half ass nut sort of into the wood you know what i mean off on the back side this one is just attached to that to that guy no matter what we do you know he's not coming free man we tried and tried and tried he's just stuck on him, man. you know what i mean it's a marriage made in heaven they, they don't want to give up each other so whatever we'll, we'll leave it you know what i mean just leave it man so what we're going to do is we need to reset this wood man see how this is all the camera sometimes like is like real romantic looking. Everything looks good, but you, from that angle, you can see what I'm talking about, man. You see that? In real life, in person, man, this thing's got a huge bridge lift. This is real thin wood, man. This is real, real thin. This is starting to—it's it's a shit quality too, you know. And it's starting to peck away a little bit. This looks like it's some kind of like real cheap plywood you know, made in Japan. You know what I'm saying, man? Did beautiful rosette. He didn't really use good wood to inlay it into. So we need to reset this wood because it's like kind of humped up like that. You know what I mean? It goes down and it goes in like a wave going. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a boiling carafe full of water. I've done this many, many times. We're just going to pour it in there outside. We're going to let it set, you know what I mean, right on that bump for about a half hour until the water cools off. We're going to dump the water out of it. As soon as we bring it back downstairs, we're going to put all kinds of tight bond on here. You know what I'm saying? We're just going to clamp this shit down. We're going to have one clamp pushing this guitar down. And a couple of U-clamps in here, you know, keeping this guy exactly on here. You know, clamp the shit out of it while it's wet. And then let it dry while it's clamped. That's the plan, peeps. So I'll see you outside with the craft of water, man. You just watch what I do, man. Don't do what I watch. Watch what I do, man. Peace be with y'all, man. Half screw, man. Yo, one-sided screw up, man. All right, folks, great outdoors. You got a big carafe of burning water. See the smoke coming off of it. If you look carefully, it was a real sunny day, so not too much smoke action happened. I'm gonna pour that in there, man. Don't be afraid, man. We can fix you finish. We can fix the finish, man. Yeah, get in there, man. Gotta reset that wood. Sometimes you just need a reset, man. You know what I'm saying? You're not happy with things are going? Just reset it, man. Let that set for about a half hour. You know what I'm saying, man? In the peaceful outdoors. Peace be with you. Always. Alright, so it's been about 45 minutes. And about, man. Let's say, approximately. Put a couple rags in here. And, you know, after we dumped out all the water we possibly could. Dry, dry it off. Just blew it out with the hair dryer a little bit on this side, you know, the back side of sure, you know what I mean? A little bit of wetness in there. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to lay down a thick, you know what I mean, thick ass bead of old tight bond right on there. And just clamp this up with some U-clamps inside, some clamps on top, man. That's what we're going to do. All right? And I'll see you when we're all clamped out, man. Clamped up and out, man. We're just going to keep it down. Keep it down, you know what I mean? Two things to keep it down, man. Can you get down, man? Get down on it. Get down on it. All clamped up, man. 
Clamped out, man. We got one clamp in the inside, up the middle. Another clamp on the inside, on the side. And this one doesn't even, you know, I mean, it wasn't even like sticking up anywhere. So I just put some heavy stuff on top of it. Some wax paper there. And I got a big guy on the outside here, holding the middle down. It's totally flat, man. You see that? Totally flat against everything. Shining through like a, a beautiful day, man. Use one of these to clean up all the excess glue. I'm going to go bring this upstairs and wash it out. You know what I'm saying? Wet rag. You know, not too much glue hanging around. Actually kind of dented in now a little tiny bit. A little tiny bit. As soon as we put strings on there, it's going to pull that right back out, man. You know what I'm saying? I can hear little creaks and cracks right now, man. Things setting, man. So, by the powers vested me in YouTube, I'll see you in exactly 24 hours when I snap my finger. Watch oh, this, man. Power of time. Do, 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 do. 24 hours, people. Solidly affixed to the top of this guitar, man. Glue's all dried up. You know what I mean? It's real. You know what I mean? There's no space. It's real nice, man. It's a good job, man. Every couple hours, took the hair dryer, right? Sort of stuck it in that little hole there where we fit it in a little tiny bit and you know what I mean? Just dry this guy up a little bit. We we poured like two liters of boiling water in there yesterday. You know what I'm saying? So let's get these cumbersome clamps out. Let's keep treating it with that hair dryer every, you know what I mean, hour or so. For about three or four hours, you know what I mean? Maybe we'll put this guy outside. It's a nice beautiful day out today. Let us sort of just, you know what I mean, breathe, you know what I'm saying? Breathe a little bit, man. Peace be with you, man. I see when we're all unclamped, man. Unclamped and mostly dry, man. Peace be with you. So it's the end of a long day being outside. Beautiful sunlight. Dusk starting to set in. So, it looks like it's actually straightened out a little bit. You know what I mean? That being outside, you know what I mean? The, the wood sort of reset even further. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit dented in now. It looks like it's almost perfect, man. But one thing I just noticed back here, see this? The water kind of buckled this up. You see this? You see that? It pushes in. That's from, that's from my bad people. So I'm going to bring this down to the basement. You know what I'm saying? Let it dry off a little bit while longer. Tomorrow morning. We'll put a pipe clamp on there. We gotta take our time, people. We gotta take our time. Let's bring her inside. And there we go, folks. So the next day we got it all clamped up. Got two pipe clamps keeping things together. All right? We got a quick grip on that one side. I put like a weight and another weight on top of it. Because <laughs> I couldn't get a clamp in there to sort of hold it together, man. Hold it together like a sandwich. Some wax paper and some little wood blocks in there. Keep the spacing correct. So hopefully it'll look nice in a couple hours once we take these clamps off. Again, no big whoop. You know what I'm saying? It kind of sucks that that happened. But, you know what I mean? The benefits far, far, far outweigh. You know what I'm saying? The negative factors in this repair job. So I'll see you in a couple hours. We'll take a look how it looked. We'll look at the look, man. Look it out, man. Look it up. Peace be with you. Always. So we've had it clamped about five and a half hours now. Took the weights off of it. I don't want them falling off. And it looks pretty good, man. Let's unclamp it and just let it sit out in the sun for, you know what I mean, the rest of the afternoon. You know what I mean? I don't want all signs of dampness off. You know what I'm saying? Peace be with you. All my friends. Everywhere. All right, so we're out here in the beautiful outdoors. Unclamped. Dried out here for quite a few hours now. Looks great, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's just a little wonky, but I mean, Jesus Christ. You know what I'm saying? It's a little better than it was, man. So, we've had it sitting out for a couple of days outside. You know what I'm saying? Just drying out. And I really want to make sure this bridge is dry. And I've sort of like caulked it with more glue every night you know what I mean just around the edges because sometimes these bridges when they're not properly pressed I mean the right way is to remove the bridge and then like set in boiling water 
You know, and this is the right Bobby G way. You know what I'm saying? For like a half hour. Then you're going to press it on like the countertop between a piece of like wax paper and like, you know, a hard piece of wood. Just press it straight down. A couple days, you know, we let it dry in that position. You know what I'm saying? Mold into that position. But we couldn't really do that with this. So we're going to want to, you know what I mean? That Czechoslovakian guitar that I recently finished. You know what I'm saying? I think I jumped the gun on that. You know what I mean? The wood, after a couple weeks, started to like shrivel up a little bit, man. I'd like to redo that thing and press it properly at one point. Not this point, man. We're still working with this guitar, so we're going to let this set out for a little while. Let's talk about something else that we want to do, though. You see these sides here, man? We've had all the paint stripped off there. It was originally black paint. I thought of a couple different ways to, you know, easily, quickly sort of fix it, but... You know what I mean? I'm not generally easy and quick kind of guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask it off real quickly down the basement. And we'll try to do it in a non, you know what I mean? A non-stressful way, man. We want to be peaceful, man. See you down here in the cellar. And we'll explain what we're going to do. Real easy this time, man. <laughs> you see that? In less time than it usually takes me to find my car keys every morning. I got this guy all, you know what I'm saying, Nance now. Big plastic bag, man. Garbage bag, big shopping bag. I've actually used this guy twice, man. Maybe three times. I'm good with the planet, man. And this guy I got at a store, man. Hardware store, I believe. You know what I'm saying? I'm recycling fool, man. We got the places exposed completely that we need to paint black at only those places. All right. Everything else is secure. Got a little bit of lacquer, man. We're going to take this guy outside. We're going to shake it up, man. Right? We're going to shake it up. You want to shake it up? Uh, shake it up. See you out there, man. Hey, Rustolian, man. Bobby G and you, man. Let's talk sponsorship, man. I know you got the money, bruh. Let's paint the town together. Uh, and there you have it, folks. You know what I'm saying? Looks great. I don't really want to mess with it too much. Let it sit here on the sun. These things here, I got this from Aldi actually. It's not all these people, it's Aldi people. Yo, I'm going to Aldi real quick. Aldi people. Anyway, man, these are great. You know what I'm saying? For paint little things in your backyard. Or if you're like a homeless dope fiend, you, know, you can serve your beloved, you know, breakfast in bed. I got you a couple of them hostess cakes you like. And I cleaned off your favorite needle, baby. Baby, wake up. Oh, well, more for me. So we're going to let this sit out in the sun here. You know what I mean? 20 minutes, half hour. You know what I'm saying? That's all I got to say about that. I'll see you back downstairs. All right. Looks great, man. Unmasked. Did a little tiny bit of steel wool to it. And actually... Believe it or not, I took a magic erase sponge to it and just buffed it up a little bit. Just did. We got the lacquer almost seamlessly, like, sort of blended into the old lacquer there. Without a, without a doubt, man, this side wasn't as seamless because it's kind of fucked up on this side, but it's fine, man. A little bit of natural wear and tear, man. Looks beautiful, man. Let's do a little fret job on this old girl, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's treat it up, man. Like there was definitely some, definitely some playing going on here. Not just in the cowboy cords, we got some, you know what I mean? But we're up here too, man. You know what I'm saying? Mostly in the cowboy cords, though. That's what we like, man. Let's get it all cleaned up. I'll see you when we're all greased up, man. When we're all greased up, man. You know what I'm saying? Take it easy, man. My dear friends. Steel neck friends. Mm -hmm. All greased up, man. That's beautiful. I did a world-class fret job on this old girl, man. I don't know why, man. I definitely, this guitar did not deserve the high-class fret job I did on it. You know, maybe just to hone my skills, man. Essentially, what happened was I, I ran the, the block over it, which got like 200 sandpaper glued to the bottom of it. This has gone through a couple of guitars already. So it's probably, you know what I mean, pretty weak anyway as it is. Well, we got to a point where there's like having like an oval shape here that just I couldn't get it. You know, this fret was very high. It's just you know what I mean. Lucky, man. 
probably wouldn't even matter because it's a classical guitar. Strings are going to be a little bit higher than, you know what I mean? Wouldn't really matter anyway because I'm a cowboy chord guy anyhow. But I was like, you know what? I wanted to do a great fret job on this fucking guitar just because, you know what I mean? So to get rid of the, the uh, zero, I kind of went on a block, you know what I mean, with like uh, higher grit sandpapers. Then I came back down here. And then I got a flat, you know what I mean, even, you know what I'm saying? These these frets were all kind of like flat-faced, you know what I mean? So I went the fret file up and down, you know what I mean? And I, You know what I mean? Fret file, you have to sort of like kind of do this sometimes. You know what I mean? It's got two sides of it, you know what I mean? One side's like coarse grit and one's more finer. And I just reshaped them all really by eye, you know what I'm saying, until they look like frets again. You know what I'm saying? Fine, you know what I mean, frets, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know what I mean, we just sort of went over this one more time and, you know, just a couple of little quick ups, make sure we were perfect, you know what I mean, that we hadn't over zealously sanded stuff, you know what I mean? It's just the truth of the matter. And then we went with the mineral oil, took some mineral oil. We took first triple grade steel wool and we just sort of cleaned up the area a bit, you know what I'm saying, and just sort of, you know, want to make sure that, you know what I'm saying, it was perfectly U shaped and there was no, you know what I mean? There was no screw-ups, you know what I'm saying? So then we went down to quadruple zero steel wool, finishing steel wool. We did it again, you know what I mean, with mineral oil, you know, oil sand in it. And that looked good. And then, just, you know, this is a trick that Dr. Batilla, this is, he actually gave me these, I don't know, 20 years ago, something like that. And uh, it was a trick he showed me where you take a piece of uh, lens paper and, and, you, and you go up and down, and I mean, that'll get rid of, all the crap, you know what I mean, that's been deposited from all the craziness, you know, that you've done with the frets, you know, so it's cleaning out like, like a madman, and it will super polish, you know what I mean, the frets after, you know, he ha had a different sort of method of getting them even, and I, I, I'm more of an oil sander guy where he was like an old-fashioned, you know what I mean, just dry sander. Anyway, man, but either way, you know what I'm saying, a little bit of oil, Mineral oil and the uh, lens paper, man. Shit gets fucking correct, man. You know what I mean? It's real. They're real clean. They're totally like, you know what I mean? Perfect, man. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And these old frets from Japan and Korea, you know, the later ones especially, they they were sort of like coated with some kind of like uh, chrome sort of finish. You know what I mean? A lot of times the finishes you've seen is falling off. And the metal underneath it was pretty much the same as the finish just like ultra shiny version so you got to get that off sometimes and this was i think the case with this particular instrument but they're all perfect man. beautiful 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 we'll let this you know oil just grease in there for a little while i'll just talk to you for like almost four minutes about a fret job on a guitar that didn't even deserve it man just didn't even deserve it man let it set 45 minutes or so wipe it off and then we're gonna come back and hit this guy up with some furniture polish cleaning off all this glue and shit I'll see you when that's accomplished, man. Until then, peace be with you. Godspeed. Yeah. Alright, now we're sheening in the sand. Sheening in the sand. Look at that glimmery glass. Look beautiful. Still got a couple things to do, people, man. See this, man? Going around the sides here, man. Don't like it. I don't like it at all. It's all scratched up. You know what I'm saying? We took a special special care of this. I mean, just to have this looking all shiny. Furniture mark, man. I've had this for like five, six years, man. Dollar Tree, man. Before that, I had another one, man. It's like real lacquer, man. Can you believe it, man? Can you believe it? It is some kind of weird lacquer substitute, man. It's beautiful. We're going to go around the, the perimeter, and I'll see you right then, man. Right then and there. Look at all that, man. I told you to wipe your feet when you come in the room, you dirty old rascal. Much more beautiful than before. It's like a time for Christmas again. And again and again, mono heart. That's great, man. Now, I didn't really fuck with the back, man. The back's got all kinds of shit on it that we can't really fuck with. You know what I'm saying? There's some stuff going on here. You know what I'm saying? It's not easy to sort of, you know what I mean? Well, I'm not going to even address it because it's, you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean, man? I could strip this whole back and do all kinds of cartwheels for you, but probably devalue the guitar in honesty, man. 
So any hoot, you know what I mean? I don't want to pollute. But while we got these little markers out, man, I want to do something special for you, man. I want to take this marker here, man. I just want to kind of sort of fill in. See how that's all I sort of, you know what I'm saying, man? Let me get the top off this guy here. It's hard to take the top off one hand. These are really strong, man. See that? See, this is live, live action footage, man. We're just going to take this guy. Yeah. We're just going to color him in a little bit. Yeah. Get some color in. See. You like being colored in? I like to color things in. There, slowly. I'm taking my time. I like to take my time. You like to take your time? Is it time to take our time together? What a timely thing to do. You know what I'm saying? I want to get drenched in this thing. Like no substitute shite, man. You know what I'm saying, man? Smythe Cooth, man. Very Smythe Cooth, whatever that means. So, what we're going to do right now is we're going to find those little pieces. And we're going to pop them back in there, man. And I'll see you. One shake. Of a lamb's ass. All right, so there it is, man. We got the little piece back in there. You know, what I'm saying did the best we could. Looks okay, man. Try to keep if you got like a little drill, your little round parts together, man. We still have that hole there, which like is fine. You know what I mean? But if you're a neurotic, crazy person like me, we can get rid of that. You know what I mean? In a temporary way, if we ever have to access it again. This is a crayon found in the bin. You know what I'm saying? I believe this came with a uh, a Princess Rapunzel kit or Sophia the First kit. I believe. Don't quote me on that. I'm not too sure. It's been a while now. It's a pretty old crayon. What we're going to do is we're just going to fill that in with that, man. Like this is some kind of, you know what I mean, filler marker. You know what I mean, man? Just like fill it in here. You know what I'm saying, man? You see that? You see it? see it too well now you see we'll shine a light on it man oh i take the flash off though check this out now you can't really see that better man you know what i'm saying now you can't really tell man it's all about the flash man everything's all flashy these days man i'm gonna fill in the other one man see there's another one and then we'll be a peaceful family i'll see you then <laughs> do you see that do you see that man splendid man splendid times had for all man you now we've got this old label, man. We gotta put this label on, man. So what we're gonna do is we're smear the back with type on. We're gonna take this old lumber marking pencil and we're gonna put a piece of masking tape over it. And we're just gonna from the back side hold it like this. You know what I mean? With the masking tape, center it perfectly. You know what I mean? Steady man hand. Oh, no, I can't do it, man. I got problems with putting stickers in. It's as good as we can, man. As good as we can, man. No big whoop. I'll see you for better or for worse, man. Peace be with you. You see that? I was actually able to find the original footprint where that glue was. You can kind of see it on the end there where it's all chipped up. You know what I'm saying? Where the original glue was. So it's in the exact place, the right place, man. Did what I said I was going to do, man. I took this, you know, we covered it with some masking tape, real sticky. See that? It's all sticky, man. And then I pushed it off with a piece of wood. You know what I mean? And I took a little roller and I rolled it out. So you could have one of these rollers, man. It's a good thing, man. Perfect, 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 perfect. So now, I know it's all sheeny shiny, and I know you guys like sheeny shininess. I know you like the sheeny shininess, but I want to make it even better sheeny shiny, because it's still a little wonky shiny, man. You got some moms. I'm going to put that on the body. You know what I'm saying? I put a little bit on the headstock, from the back, and the back, and the back. And I'm going to take a little butcher's wax and put it on this tiny... Tiny little rosewood veneer that we got going here. Let's get it all sheeny shiny and I'll see you in a second second. Give me a second second. Give me 265 seconds. Your model. Look at that. Glossy finish, man. It's almost like a class finish, man. That's gorgeous, man. You see that? Oh. Chocolate ribbon, man. 
Oh, that's great with that. You know, it's like too bad it had that ultra ding right there, but we don't have our cross to bear in this world. You know, I mean, nobody can be perfect. Variety is the spice of life, people. Imperfection is what makes us perfect, man. Think about that shit, man. Think about it. Man. Just think about it. These are glued on. You see that? We've talked many times about these kind of things, man. The Japanese kind of gave up to it again, and they started like doing things shoddy, man. One thing left to do: stick this guy into the slot. Let me stick my card into your slot, man. Ooh, it's a tight slot. Ooh, is it gonna fit? It used to fit. Urgh, yes, it fits. It's like all other slots you've had in the meantime are smaller than my card, man. But what are we talking about, man? So we're gonna use the same strings actually that came on this old girl. You know what I'm saying? I found an A string in a pile. I just ordered like a 10 pack of D strings off of Amazon.com. You know what I'm saying, man? Once that comes in, we'll just use that. Let's just borrow a string off another guitar for now, man. Shh, don't tell nobody. See the glamour shots. Peace be with you. Look after yourself. And there it is, people. You know what I'm saying? Finally, in the glam shot days. No movement on that bridge, man. You see that? Still hugging tightly to that guitar. And the string tensions pulled out any kind of hump. Straight. Even, man. That's good, man. I told you I was caulking the sides of this with wood glue for days and days, man. Hey, man, it's a Kmart guitar from the late 60s. I say that because it's made in Japan. So that says 60s. As opposed to Korea. And it's got these Phillips head screws in the gears. You know what I'm saying? The last of the Japanese days, man. Last of the Japanese days. The back's not, you know what I mean, that great. The front's beautiful. You know, you saw this guitar from the front, you're like, wow. That's an excellent condition example, man. You know what I'm saying? Kmart, man. Kmart, man. And if all else fails, look at this. I still got like a, what I could pass off as like a 50s-esque Gibson strap button. You gotta give a little focus on that, man. You know what I'm saying? I never get good focus in. There you go, man. You see that? My focus group is complete, man. So, here we go. Oh, no, you're not focused at all. What's going on there? Hey man, it's a learning experience every day, man. You know, I'm not technological, you know. I'm fucking Bill Gates. Let's hear this thing, man. I love you. 98 over and out, people. Let's hear it, man. Let's hear it. There it is, people. G has some money. 265 by 365 minus 100. <laughs> Kmart Blue Plate Special. Made for Kmart, people. Isn't that beautiful? Nice, man. It's a nice sounding guitar, too. Anyway, man, there's been no separation down here, which is great. It's playing good. If, it, if I was to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't have put this little saddle in. I probably would have put a piece of neck binding in. Slinky, slinky, it actually, because the neck is beautiful. The neck, no moving on it. Got the tuner on here, man. I'm like addicted to this tuner, man. My boy Ricky, he had this little snark tuner. And he got a new one, he gave me the old one. He's like, you become addicted to this, Bobby G. Because I had a tuner on my phone, you know what I mean? And I said, whoa. And then the snark tuner, like, broke and died one day. And I got this one from AliExpress for, like, $3 from China. And it took, like, two months to get it. You know, I had to go back to using that. You know? And it came, and I was like, this, it was better than the snark, man. I'm addicted to it. I walk around with it in my ear all day. I'm in tune, man. It's F flat, man. Listen to me, people. So, I told you a couple 
preliminary stories. Let me tell you the main story, the 98th story for our video journal here. I remember like 1983, coming home from school. You know, my parents had just gotten a brand new entertainment system in their bedroom. You know, I had a dual cassette, you know what I mean, tape deck in there, radio, you know what I mean, I had a turntable on there, man. You make excellent quality tapes for the first time of any media, you know what I mean? So we were all out of cassette, you know, boom boxes and players at the time, man. You know what I'm saying? But we didn't have any way to make real good quality, you know, stuff off the radio or, you know what I mean? We're taping shit right off the fucking speaker, man. You know what I mean? Microphone, man. You know what I'm saying? This was the first, like, you know, consolidated thing in the house where we could make good tapes. You know? So, rewind a little bit, man. But a year before that, my father had gotten this 45 single, Billy Joel, Say Goodbye to Hollywood, off the single off the Songs of the Attic album, man. My brother and I played that song a million fucking times, man. My family is a family favorite. We danced around the record player, the whole family, man. My father and everybody, man. It was great, man. We dug that record, man. And then shortly after that, geez, he released She Got Away. He went out and got that single, and we were like, oh, it was beautiful, man. We were all singing and hugging and huddling, man, like a family should, man. So my father was talking to his friend. His friend was like, already, oh, Mr. Audio File, he had every tape, every record, every disc, man. He was old. He was like, you got to get a copy of that record, Larry. That'll change your life, man. So we dug him a copy of Songs in the Attic off the vinyl, I believe. He was like, listen, listen to this, this one. So anyway, fast forward, I come home from school, man. My father's in his room, all, you know what I mean, like, keyed up. You know what I mean? He says, son, come in, sit down. I said, what's up, Bob? You know, I took my backpack down, you know. He said, sit down, I want to play you something. And he had the tape all keyed up on pause and shit, you know what I mean? He said, sit, sit, sit down, relax, man. And I heard this little jangling little piano and shit, man. It was Miami 2017. And I was just like, I was like seven, eight, you know what I mean? And as the song was over, he, put, he stopped. He's like, what, what does that song mean to you, son? I, it's just sounded kind of like war to me, Dad. I'm like, war? He's like, he's like, that song's like the end of the world. The apocalypse, son. And then he's like, <laughs> fast, fast forward. He's like, oh, watch this one. This one will blow your mind. And he goes to like a certain like, number, you know what I mean, a little tape counter. He's like, wait, here it is. And he press pause. He's like, sit, sit back like this, man. He's like, fuck you, Captain Jack, man. And I was like seven and I said, what the hell is this? It was like a carnival, you know what I mean? I didn't know what it meant, you know what I mean? I thought it was like a clown or something. Like, I had no idea what Captain Jack meant. And later on, like a couple of days later, I was in my room blasting it on my little, you know, little tape player. My mom was in the bathroom, like putting the towels away. She listened to it. She said, she goes up to my father. She's like, Ski, did you make fucking a tape about heroin user or something like that? What the hell is this? She said, well, I don't even know it was about heroin, you know <laughs> Uh, like, you know what I'm saying? But the songs, that album, man. The songs, yeah, it changed my life, man. It did, man. You know, those lights were bright on Broadway. But that was so many years ago. Before we all lived here in Florida. Before the mafia. They say a handful still survive To tell the world about The way the lights went out And keep a memory alive Billy Joel, wash those little stubby hands, I love you, man. You're like a, you're like a second father to me, man. Peace be with you. You know what I'm saying? It's not the apocalypse yet, man. It's only episode 98, man. 99. Next week, man. Checkmate part two. Be there, be square. Ooh.